Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about CSS modules and I'm going to share a few thoughts on these reoccurring questions to work practices and technologies that I favor when I do JavaScript development. So let's get into it. So a few of the most common questions this one included is, Frederick, what do you think about Bootstrap? Frederick, what do you think about using styled components? What do you think about CSS modules and all these different various things, right? And I think that I should elaborate a little bit on the sort of mindset that I have when I do JavaScript development overall. It, this is not, of course, exclusive to JavaScript, but there is a few things to keep with you especially when you do front-end work that ties into this, that makes it sort of, but not necessarily front-end specific. So, first and foremost, let's talk about CSS modules. And let's pose the fundamental question, because this is a the sort of question that I always ask myself before I buy into any technology. First and foremost, I ask, what value is this going to give me? Now, CSS modules, for those of you who don't know it, allows you to hash or basically create unique selectors through webpack in this scenario. And it allows you to be certain that your naming conventions, regardless of what you put on your class, regardless of your class name, you can be guaranteed that it's going to be unique. That is one of the main benefits to this. So uniqueness is the thing that you're after here. And uniqueness, so what's so good about that? Well, it allows us to just use class names. Uh, well, we can use other selectors like IDs, for example, as well. But for the sake of argument, let's just stick to C classes. So that's the beauty here. So let's fundamentally ask, what's so good about that? Uniqueness. And then you ask, OK. And this is the important question. This is the one that most people don't ask, especially when you're on a hype train. All right. Why is this more valuable than the thing I'm already doing? So if your answer to that question is, well, I have this problem with specificity and I always get into situations where I have a, an ID or like some really long selector and uh, I, it would be so nice if I could just get away from that and just have a flatter structure with less specificity. That's a great, that, you know, that's a great argument that you have a problem with that. But then I always pose the question, okay, is there an easier way for me to solve that problem? In this scenario, the answer is very easy. Well, you will have to rethink the way that you do CSS. And when you know how to write CSS in such a way that you don't have this problem, then you reevaluate this statement again. Is it, has the situation changed? Have you now, with new knowledge, found that the same thing is true. Is CSS module still valuable to you when you actually know how to do this without CSS modules? Because if you don't know how to do it, then you're, in my opinion, then you're solving the wrong problem. You're solving through a library or a tool what is actually a knowledge deficit on you. That's the problem. The problem isn't that you, that you have specific, specific selectors. The problem is that you don't know how to write CSS in such a way that you can solve it without CSS modules. So you use that instead. Do you see the difference? It's very similar to how I claim that people who say that microservices is a good idea because it helps you keep your project structured has applied the wrong tool to solve, an, solve the wrong problem. Microservices is a good fit for a certain type of problem, but code cleanliness and consistency is really not the, it's not really the problem that you're going like you're going for there. Same deal here. So once you now know how to do this, then you reevaluate again. Is CSS modules better at solving my specificity, specificity problem than what I'm already using? Now me personally, I find that that's very rare. I use BEM to have uh, to so solve specificity problems and to this day I have not found a single scenario where I thought, thought CSS modules was better at solving this problem for me than just using BAM. Well, I'll raise my finger and I say because we're going to be objective here though I have found that specificity problems when you have actual 
how do I put this? When you actually have put time and effort into thinking about how to structure your, C your CSS, can still be an issue if you have a component or something like that where there's a very high risk of uh, global mutations. So if you have a component that you put into a I don't know, a third party's website and they have all tons of CSS, then you really need inline styles or CSS modules or something like that to really, really be sure that your stuff stays completely untouched by the global mutations. So when you've considered all these things, you have arrived at the fundamental question. And this is the fundamental question to ask. All right. Let's make a cost value analysis here. Is the thing I'm getting here so valuable that it's worth the migration and the extra cost of maintaining this? Because simplicity versus complexity has to be weighed off. You have to gain something from adding it. I to this day have not found that CSS modules wins that equation ever. I've never, I, so far I can't see it Maybe it will come someday, but my analysis every time I look at it is that using BEM is more universal, it's easier to learn and set up. You can use it for every project instead of every, just being forced to use this plugin. I'm not tied into any dependencies and nothing like that. It's the simplest thing I know of and it works just as well. So the, like the, the cost ba benefit value or that analysis is off. So the same thing I apply to all of these things such as should I use this framework or that tool and so forth and so forth. The way that I always try to think about things is in terms of what is the simplest thing I can use that still gives me the same productivity value because nice to have is simply not good enough for me because I've been down this road too many times and I've spent too many hours debugging issues and figuring out how to solve problems that may not be explicitly related to the thing that I'm using or this dependency I have, but because of this dependency, I have more things to consider when, when there's a problem in another region or another area of the code. I don't know how many times I've been forced to go through webpack configurations that look like, like just a big mess of plugins and loaders and stuff. And because there's so much of it, it just makes everything much harder. Even if I know what all of them do. So, for me, simplicity is the key here. And so, when you ask these questions about CSS modules and style components, you have to fundamentally remember, I will always most likely go with the thought, okay, which one is simpler? Is style components simpler than just plain old CSS? It depends, how well do you know CSS? If you really know your stuff, no. It's not simpler. It's just a convenience to bridge what I like to call skill or like a, a, a gap, productivity gap or skill gap, whatever you want to call it. Same thing with CSS modules. So what I want you to take away from this, guys, is that there's nothing wrong with CSS modules, but I always encourage you when you have these sorts of questions and when you wonder about these, okay, should I use that tool or that tool, is to fundamentally ask, what is the problem that this is solving for you? And if that value or the solution to this problem that this tool or this thing is providing you outweighs the complexity of adding it to your stack. Because I can tell you from experience that the simpler that you can make your project, the more long-term productivity you are going to have. Have a great day.